Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my out of box review here for the Kotobukiya 1 to 100 scale frame arms cutlass version RE. So the R version RE once again just means that it has the updated uh, architect frame inside there that has a little bit better solidarity, a little bit better articulation, and basically it's just going to give it uh, a little bit better result in the end. So you have a nicer kit here. Uh, and again, this design is based off of the Basilard. I've been corrected on the pronunciation of that name, so sorry about that. I, apparently it's uh, pronounced Basilard, but uh, that came first. This one came second, but they share a lot of similarities, but a little bit of differences as well. I really like uh, the design of this, all the little thrusters, the verniers, thruster bells, whatever, sticking out everywhere, and the fact that they're white is really cool as well. It makes for a really interesting color scheme, albeit maybe a little bit dull for some people's tastes. The gray and even like the the white and the red, which normally should pop on a kit, are a little bit dull. The white is off-white, the red is a little bit of like a dull red. Uh, so it's not a super bright, like, popping kit, uh, but I think the thruster bells in there being in white do make for a pretty cool look overall. It's pretty simple in its design, as you can see, it doesn't really have, like, a big elaborate backpack or anything too big and elaborate in terms of weapons or anything, as we'll see in a moment as well. Uh, so that makes it one of the cheaper kits in the Frame Arms line as well, so if you're looking for, like, an entry-level kit to just try out the Frame Arms line, uh, and I think this is probably a good example of one for that. With the suggested retail price for this kit being 40 200 yen, uh, about 40 to 45 dollars for that. You might think, well, oh, that's still a little bit high for a pretty bare bones design here with not really a whole lot going on. And yeah, that's true, but compared to the rest of the frame arms line, they're uh, all typically a little bit more than that, or ranging to a lot more than that, depending on the size of them. And speaking of the size of this, it's roughly about the size of a smaller Master Grade, so not going to be as big as like the new Gundam or the Unicorn or something like that in 100 scale, but similar in size probably to uh, like a Wing series Gundam in 100 scale. It's going to be about the same size as that. So real quick, I do also want to say a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review, guys. Check the link to their site down below if you want to check out their ever-expanding arsenal of Kotobukiya kits there, as well as everything Bandai and Gunpla and all that, and you can save 10% using my coupon code there. Let's get into talking about what you get included here with this kit. So aside from the closed fists, which are there on the kit now, you do also have some different hand options here. You have a set of these really cool looking open hands here for the left and the right side. You have a set of these kind of weird looking trigger finger or holding hands here because the wrist is kind of like offset there so that it can hold the rifle without that interfering with the arm. Then you do also have a set of just like regular holding hands here. Now if you want to use those, uh, you'll have to swap the wrist, uh, you'll have to swap the thumb. You don't have enough thumbs for all the hands so you have to just take the thumb from one hand, put it onto the other if you want. But uh, for this kit, I don't think we're really going to be using those. Anyway, we do also have this extra accessory bit here, and this is meant to be plugged onto the side here. Not exactly clear what that is meant to be. Actually, I'm wondering if that's supposed to be a folded up version of the rifle. As you can see, it's like the same parts here, or um, like an ammo cartridge for the rifle or something. I'm not exactly sure. But here is the rifle, and you'll notice the handle, very extreme angle for that, so that doesn't move at all, it's just going to have to be held on there, so that's why you have the weird angle of the wrist for holding on to that, because it's going to be held like next to, it's going to have to be held like beside the arm because of that weird angle, but it's a pretty interesting take on a rifle, very simple, but very uh, interesting in its angles and everything. And then you have this kind of bladed shield sort of blade weapon, shield weapon sort of thing that plugs onto the side of his arm. And you'll notice these clear parts are just plain clear, so you can paint them in whatever color that you want. In the manual and on all the official artwork for this, they're in like a kind of clear bluish green. The details are there for that in the manual. And it's the same thing down here for the blades on the feet. They're essentially the same as these ones here. Uh, on the side. The thing about these though is that while they look good from this side, when you look on the other side, uh oh, there's only a gray part on one side of this. So you will want to mask that and paint that bit gray so that it looks like an actual solid gray piece around there holding just the blade uh, of that being clear. And it's the same thing up here for the weapon shield bits on there as well. And if you're wondering about the angle of these, as you can see they're like set at an offset angle, if you can make them perfectly flat or straight, actually you can't, it's actually meant to be held like that. 
And that's pretty much it for all of his included accessories and things like that, but you do have a handful of leftover parts, again, from the Basilard. Uh, and one of them would be this different part here for the head. So if you didn't like this uh, asymmetrical part here for the head with like the one fin sticking up off to the side, you can use this one from the Basilard. Also, this part here is meant to go down here on the knee. And see, this one doesn't have anything extending down, but this one actually goes in there and extends down over the front of this uh, thruster bell there on the front of the knee there. So if you wanted to have that on there, you could use that instead as well as a bunch of other leftover parts that you have, but those are really the only ones that are kind of really worth mentioning, I think. Let's talk a little bit about the articulation while we're here. The head will only go up to about there, not really very high at all, but then down to there, which is not too bad, and of course turn left and right. The clear part in there for the visor is looking really nice. Again, it's nice that it's just plain clear, so you can paint it whatever color that you want if you wanted that in clear orange or clear red or clear, clear blue, clear green, or any color. In the shoulder, that will swing forward and back a little bit like so. Because of the bulk here at the top of the shoulder, you can't get that to move up very high at all, unfortunately. So you're really only going to be able to bring the arm up to about there, which is pretty disappointing. That said, we can just rotate the arm there at the top. Double joint there in the elbow will give you a little bit more than 90 degrees if you're pulling that out of the poly cap uh, inside there a little bit, kind of pulling the joint apart will give you a fuller bend, but otherwise without doing that, you're going to be looking at just a little bit slightly more than 90 degrees for just a standard bend there. In the waist section here we have a really nice ab crunch there forward and back, forward all the way to there and back very far all the way to there. Side to side, however, you're not going to really be getting any bend in that way at all, but you will have some rotation there at the waist as well. Around here on the back, nothing really moves except for this part here on the kind of back of the waist section that will move up and down a little bit. It's just a hard point for, to, for you to be able to attach on stuff, whatever you want. I guess, for example, you could attach on your kind of blade shield thing here on the back, but otherwise there's nothing really included in this particular kit that you could plug onto there, but any one of Kotobukiya's vast line of uh, parts extra add-on parts and add-on we add weapons, things like that, you could plug there onto the back skirt. Down here in the hips, you can get the wet legs spread wide to about there, that is very nice. Obviously, forward and back not going to be an issue at all, as you don't have any front or back kind of skirting armor around on that. You'll have some rotation there at the top of the leg, you can bring our leg forward and get a nice double bend there in the knee. Nice double bend, a nice separation of this armor part there for the knee, but it's really, again, only gonna be about 90 degrees, maybe a little bit more. But as you can see, nice hard points on there for, again, more customizing if you want. Hard points, hard points around everywhere. This little flap here at the front of the lower leg will move up and down. For the ankle, you can move that all the way side to side, and no problems there at all for getting a really super wide stance if you wanted. This blade does not move up and down, but you can easily just remove that if you wanted to have this as just like a handheld weapon, you could use that like so. Now here's another area where you might want to use leftover pieces from the Basilard. This is the piece from that kit uh, that goes there in the center of the foot. So if you didn't like these knife feet, which I kind of don't, then you can use just this one, which is just kind of like a vent looking detail on there and say, which is probably what I'll do on mine. I'll eventually just swap this out later. But if you move that part out of the way, you can then bring the ankle all the way up to there, all the way back to there, no problems with that at all, and then up underneath the feet, that's what that's going to look like. And that is pretty much going to be it for the cutlass. I'm having to re-record this last bit of audio because apparently my microphone got unplugged while I was recording this last bit. But uh, aside from that, this is a pretty cool kit. It's simple and relatively cheap, so that's nice. Some people might not like how simple it is in terms of the weapons and accessories with it only coming just with the one rifle and the two kind of sword bits and the shield kind of thing, shield sword thing on its arm as well. Anyway, it doesn't really have a whole lot in terms of weapons and accessories. Some people may like that more specialized feel of it, but of course with Kurobukiya there is always plenty of options uh, with their MSG line of different uh, option weapons and option parts and things like that. And then of course just kit bashing with other frame arms kits. It's all universally using the same architect frame. And they all use the same like uh, size pegs for a lot of the parts and everything like that. So very easy to customize by mixing and matching stuff. I did experience some stability issues with this kit with like the joint in the hips popping out, but you should just glue that in place. Uh, the peg that holds the leg to the frame, just glue that peg onto the frame. That'll be fine. And then also the waist section does get kind of loose. Uh, there it's like ab crunch section so that kind of kind of flops forward and back a little bit too easily But just tighten up that joint a little bit and you'll be all set But aside from those two really easy fixes, it's probably one of the most stable 
uh, frame arms kits that I've built. Like with any Korbukia kits, it does have uh, its fair share of things that you might have to glue, just small little parts here and there. Anything that's just falling off easily, just go ahead and glue that in place. Nothing that moves or is articulated is really causing an issue in this case. So just whether you're going to paint or not paint, whenever you're going ahead and doing your final assembly, if there's anything that feels a little bit loose or you feel like might come off, just go ahead and glue that in place and you'll be all set. So I think that just about covers everything here. Again, very similar to the Bacillard kit. I don't know if I'm ever going to go ahead and get that one as well just because I feel it's so similar and I just kind of prefer this one. That said, I am planning on getting the uh, Bacillard uh, option part set. There's like a extra option part set for that that adds like a whole bunch of like little wing and kind of armor plates and things like that for that but you can also use the, those parts to make like a pretty cool shield and different stuff with that as well so I got that option parts set I think on the way and then planning on probably using that with this kit later on eventually once I end up painting it but that's neither here nor there not really particularly related to the review of this kit so for now I'll uh, go ahead and wrap it up if you guys have any other further questions or comments about this feel free to leave those down below of course and uh, thanks so much for watching thank you again to USA Gundam store for sponsoring the review guys and uh, I'll see you next time Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Remember, if you wanna check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam store. Use that coupon code, Zakurilius10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.